So I'll start by welcoming everybody to this um, webinar Zoom tonight. Uh, I'd like to welcome our esteemed medical panel who will be speaking about um, a hospital that's right here in our backyard in New Jersey. Um, it's about 10 minutes from Yale and it's a, it's a well-known hospital that I think needs more accolades and more uh, attention from our deal community. So that's what this webinar uh, is about tonight. Before I introduce our uh, esteemed doctor panel, I'd like to just state some stats um, about the hospital, which when you think about it are really amazing. Jersey Shore University Medical Center was recognized in 2021 as one of America's 250 best hospitals by health grades. That makes it one of the top 5% of hospitals in the country for high quality care. It's also by health grades, one of the top 100 best hospitals in the country for stroke care and recognized with excellence awards for neurosciences and bariatric surgery. It ranks number six in New Jersey by US News and World Report. It's nationally ranked by Newsweek on the 2020 list of best maternity care hospitals. And on a personal note, um, it's near and dear to my heart because my father is a doctor, a pediatric neurologist there at Jersey Shore and my children were born there. So um, I just wanna say thank you to the doctors, first of all, on a personal note. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Glenn Parker to say some more about the panel and our speakers. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming on and uh, welcome. Um, just gonna introduce Dr. Sable, who's gonna give us an overview and a presentation of the, the state of the art institution that Jersey Shore is and the uh, warm, kind care that we have been providing uh, for many years. Uh, Dr. Sable is the regional president of the Southern Market for Hackensack Meridian Health. Uh, he oversees four of the hospitals the K Hub 90 and Children's Hospital, of course, Jersey Shore University Medical Center, Ocean Medical Center, and Southern Ocean Medical Center. He is a uh, board certified emergency room physician. Uh, he started as president of Jersey Shore uh, University Medical Center in uh, January of 2015. Uh, welcome, Dr. Sable, and uh, we look forward to your presentation. Thank you so much, Glenn, much, uh, much appreciated. And uh, it's amazing, it's already been six years since I started there. Uh, and I, as I look at the screen and I see uh, Paul Hegel uh, from the foundation, Paul and I started actually the same day. So uh, it's kind of interesting, uh, time flies, but we're forever connected at the hip basically. Um, so I wanted to just uh, first thank everybody for, for joining, uh, taking a few minutes on a, on a Monday evening, a uh, very hot Monday evening to uh, spend a few minutes with us and uh, my goal for the next few minutes and in, in, in you know hour or so is to uh, give you an overview of Jersey Shore University Medical Center, as well as Kevin and Children's Hospital. Kind of tell you a little bit about what we're about. I'll probably assume you know very little about the hospital and kind of take it from a pretty high level. Uh, but certainly at the end, uh, you know, feel free to ask any questions. Um, whoever the moderator, you know, set up that uh, that process. Um, if you want to put up the slides. Um, I don't know who's sharing them, but uh, let me just, while you're doing that, just, just start by saying, um, you know, Jersey Shore University Medical Center uh, is, really, is really an amazing hospital. And we've continued to, uh, to grow, uh, you know, leaps and bounds over the past, certainly six years that I've been here. And our focus is really on three things. Um, one, one concept, but three components. And that main concept is what we call the triple aim. And the triple aim is really about providing the best quality of care. Uh, that's number one. Number two is providing the best patient experience. And then three is reducing the total cost of care. So, you know, the best quality, best patient experience at the low, lowest total cost of care. And that's actually the triple aim. We actually talk about the quadruple aim and we add a fourth component, which is do it with joy. And that really addresses uh, our team members. Uh, and all the people that work for our network for Hackensack Meridian Health, and particularly for Jersey Shore University Medical Center, which is we also care a lot about our team members. Uh, we want them to be engaged. We want them to be satisfied. We want them to trust their leaders, uh, trust each other. Uh, and we really want to, we, we are actually what's called the great place to work. It's a, it's a survey that, that is done every year. Um, we're really striving to become a, a top 100 best place to work. And that's not just in healthcare, that's across all industries. 
So we set some very, very high bar for ourselves. Um, in addition, I just want to point out a few, few kind of highlights about Jersey Shore and what we do. Um, number one is we are an academic medical center. So when you hear Jersey Shore University, uh, we at one time were affiliated with Rutgers, Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, which is my alma mater for medical school. Um, but now we're affiliated with Hackensack Meridian Health School of Medicine. Um, we opened our school a couple of years ago, three years ago, uh, as the first private medical school, first new private medical school in New Jersey uh, in probably four or so decades, four or five decades. Um, so we are affiliated with that school and uh, very exciting. We just uh, graduated our first class in a sort of a novel curriculum. Normally, uh, when many of us trained, we did two years in the classroom and two years in the, in the uh, clinical setting. And uh, this curriculum is actually um, a three-year curriculum if um, the students choose after the third year to save a little bit of money on the tuition, um, they can join one of the Hackensack Meridian Health residency programs. Uh, residency programs are postgraduate uh, training programs to um, get more training in a particular specialty like for me, emergency medicine, for Dr. Parker, surgery, and so forth. Um, we've also been focused um, on growing our teaching programs. Um, we now have about 100, over 150 residents and fellows that we train. Again, residents and fellows are, are graduated medical students that pursue additional training in various fields. Um, we have um, about seven or eight fellowships now in cardiology, in endocrinology, in critical care, in pulmonology, nephrology, hematology, and oncology, um, many peds areas as well. We've, we've set up, and fellowships are basically additional training beyond even residency. So when you finish your, your postgraduate residency training, you can further specialize in one of the areas that I just mentioned. Um, in addition, we are a cardiac surgery center. Uh, we are the regional cardiac surgery center for Monmouth and Ocean County. So if you need to have cardiac surgery, if you need to have uh, electrophysiology procedures like uh, cardiac ablations for atrial fibrillation, or a, a left ventricular assist device for advanced heart failure. Um, the only option in, in Monmouth and Ocean Counties is Jersey Shore University Medical Center. Our cardiac program is the second largest in the state. Um, we, we do over 7,500 or so procedures uh, in, in, uh, in a year. Um, and that's by far, uh, the, the next closest is about 5,000 and that's up at Robert Wood Johnson. Uh, number one is, uh, is currently Morristown. So we do, we do uh, you know, amazing work. We have excellent quality. Uh, we have top surgeons in our program um, and we can look up, that's all publicly available data. And you know, our goal is really to provide all of what I said before, but close to home. You know, we, don't, we don't believe that residents of our communities, certainly in the, in the areas of Monmouth and Ocean County should have to travel to Philadelphia or to New York uh, when in fact, um, you know, the care that you get close to home is amazing. I can tell you, um, I practiced for over a decade in Brooklyn, New York, with my monitors. Um, I can tell you the care in New Jersey is, uh, in my opinion, far exceeds uh, care in, in many of the New York hospitals uh, as well. Um, we're also a trauma center. Uh, for many, many years, we've been a, an adult trauma center. Um, and when I came on board in 2015, uh, I had this vision to um, create a pediatric trauma center. So I think it was 2017, we became certified as only the third hospital in New Jersey to have a, a pediatric uh, trauma center. You can, you can go back to the beginning. I'll go through the slides in a, in a minute. Uh, I'll take them through in a second. I just wanna give a couple of highlights about what we are and what we do. Um, so we are, as I mentioned, one of three uh, pediatric trauma centers in New Jersey. And again, the only trauma center in Monmouth and Ocean County. Um, we are the only regional comprehensive stroke center uh, in Monmouth and Ocean County. So if you're having a, you know, a stroke, uh, either an embolic stroke with a, with a clot that's stuck in somewhere in the, in the brain, or even a hemorrhagic stroke, which is a bleeding stroke, uh, perhaps an aneurysm burst, for example, um, Jersey Shore is the comprehensive stroke center. We have all of the latest and greatest technologies uh, to be able to go and retrieve a clot or even uh, you know, um, um, fix an aneurysm. Uh, with very high, high uh, state-of-the-art, high-intensity um, equipment, which we'll talk about as well. Um, as Glenn mentioned, we have a children's hospital, Cahab Mania Children's Hospital. 
Um, we are, um, the, there's two children's hospitals in Monmouth County. There's none in Ocean County. Uh, we, are the, we are a regional perinatal center. Uh, we take care of advanced um, high-risk maternal fetal medicine for uh, mothers who are at risk for uh, potential challenges with deliveries. And we also have uh, a level three nursery, uh, which is pretty much the highest nursery um, you can have. And, um, you know, we basically can take care of, you know, preemies uh, as low as as early as 24 weeks, uh, which is pretty remarkable, the technology that we can now keep ba babies alive uh, at 24 weeks gestation, normal is 38 to 40 weeks, um, but we're able to keep these babies alive. And we have a wonderful uh, NICU graduation, neonatal intensive care unit graduation, where we take patients from the past, you know, 20, 30 years who've, who've gone through in our NICU and uh, graduated to become fully functional babies and functional adults. And, and we, uh, we bring them back and, and we do a whole ceremony. So it's really exciting. Um, in addition to that, um, as I mentioned, we are a children's hospital. And also um, one of the exciting things now, and I'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute, is we're moving uh, to really enhance our, our cancer care, our, our oncology services. And one of the nice things about partnering with Hackensack uh, Meridian, Hackensack Meridian Health, is that Hackensack University uh, Medical Center up in Hackensack um, has the John Thurer Cancer Center, which is part of a, an, an NCI designated uh, cancer consortium. NCI is National Cancer Institute. Um, and NCI designation is, is really a very, very uh, prestigious, but very difficult um, you know, badge to achieve. And through a, a collaboration with Georgetown Lombardi uh, down in the DC area, Hackensack and John Thurick Cancer Center have become a, uh, an NCI designated uh, cancer uh, site. So we are gonna be building a John Thurick Cancer Center satellite uh, in Hope Tower, as well as um, enhancing our cancer floor in the hospital, which is our Brennan 64. Um, and really the big exciting part is that we're gonna be developing um, not only phase one clinical research, but bringing on uh, a lymphoma and leuke leukemia and lymphoma program, as well as a bone marrow transplant program. And again, you know, being able to, to, to provide these life-saving uh, therapies close to home uh, in the highest level possible when, when looked at across the country is really remarkable to have in Monmouth County and at Jersey Shore University Medical Center. Um, so let me, let me just take you through this couple of slides um, just to orient you. So this is a, a, a picture of the campus. Campus is, is quite large, a couple of million square feet. If you look at the bottom uh, where it says Route 33, um, most of you are probably familiar with Route 33 uh, going in, uh, you know, going east to the right of your screen, uh, going towards Asbury Park and the ocean. Um, and obviously left would be, you know, west going towards Freehold and, and uh, Manalapan, for example, and Colts Neck. So uh, when, you, when you turn in, if you look at the blue arrows, um, I don't know, you probably can't see my pointer, but the blue arrows on the, on the bottom kind of left there, um, that's kind of the, the main entrance, uh, which is right in front of the Brennan Pavilion. And then if you continue going around, um, you'll see what's called the main entrance. So the main entrance is really on the northwest side of the campus. Um, so the bottom would be south, the top would be north, uh, left would be west, and the right would be east. So the, um, you can see the main entrance, which is right by what's called the Northwest Pavilion, where that upper arrow is on the top left. Um, and then as you go around uh, the northern, you know, as you go around the northern end and, and turn right, going towards, uh, you'll see the, another arrow for the emergency department. So. If you ever need to visit the emergency department, both the adult and the PEDS emergency department can be found at the back of the campus in the northwest uh, area of the campus. And if you continue along uh, that blue dotted line, uh, you'll come up to uh, what's called Davis Avenue, and that will take you around um, where you see Hope Tower. So Hope Tower is our uh, 300,000 square foot ambulatory uh, building and are also our our academic building where all of our academics occur. Um, there are 10 floors in the building and I can probably walk you through that in a, in a future slide. So it, the, the campus is kind of like a big square um, and you can just take that loop road all the way around to the, you know, to the main entrance or to the ER uh, or to Hope Tower as well. 
Next slide. So again, uh, I mentioned the Brennan Pavilion is what you'll face. That's what you'll see when, you, when you're turning le left into, uh, you know, coming from 33 West, going east, you'll turn left. If you're coming from the beach area, you would turn right and you would see the Brennan Pavilion. Um, and if you keep going around that loop, you'll see the Northwest Pavilion in the main entrance, which is our, our still state-of-the-art building that was built in 2010. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a couple of slides. Next slide. Um, so this is the, um, the main entrance uh, and the car atrium. So when you come through that main entrance, you walk down this corridor um, on the right side. So the entrance is at the end of that hall. Uh, there's a gift shop, uh, which, you'll, which you'll pass on your left. In this image, it's on your right. And then you'll come to um, the, the car atrium, which you can see in, in the circles, um, which is a beautiful uh, lobby, modern. Um, and it kind of takes you to uh, all areas of that building, which includes the emergency department um, and the Northwest uh, floors two, four, I'm sorry, two, uh, five and six, as well as the um, cardiovascular intensive care unit, which we'll talk about. Next slide. So I mentioned at the north, uh, in the back of the, of the campus or the opposite of Route 33, you'll see the Mary B. Black emergency department. Uh, it's about a 50,000 square foot emergency department, contains a separate area for adults, separate area for pediatrics. Uh, there's a separate area for care center or what's called fast track. Um, and we even have a behavioral health um, slash psychiatric emergency uh, unit, uh, which is monitored with, uh, you know, appropriate furniture that's safe for patients. Uh, there's video cameras, uh, the rooms are all safe. Um, and there's 24-7 you know, access there as well. Next slide. So as I mentioned, we're, we're a trauma center. Uh, we serve um, pretty much all of uh, you know, South Jersey, Ocean, Monmouth County. And uh, you know, it's, it's pretty busy, especially this time of year in the summer. Um, the beach areas uh, generate a lot of, a lot of traffic um, and we have our own helipad and uh, we actually have our own uh, helicopter now. Uh, with, um, with Hackensack, um, Air Methods uh, 1 and Air Methods 2. Uh, so you may see those flying around. Next slide. So this is our pediatric emergency department. Um, this was also built uh, when, the, when the Northwest Pavilion was built as part of the new ER. Um, it's, uh, it was built in 2010. We've done some renovations to the waiting areas and, and you know, putting things in and, and pastel colors and things on the ceiling to try to keep uh, you know, children at, at rest and at ease, especially when they're in an emergency department in an unfriendly environment. And you know, oftentimes they don't wanna be there. So we, we try to make it as, uh, as uh, friendly as possible. Now we have board certified emergency medicine physicians, um, all state of the art equipment. We have uh, games for them to play to distract them and, and all sorts of things. So it's really a, a highlight of our, of our children's hospital, the PZED. Next slide. So again, as I mentioned, you know, trying to keep it fun and keep uh, you know nice images uh, to distract uh, young young children. And we have a, a cart that has games and other things that we can bring to them. Uh, so again, we're really just trying to provide you know good quality care, enhance the patient experience, try to try to decrease or eliminate their anxiety, um, which no kid wants to be in the emergency department. Next slide. Um, so technology is a big part of what we do, and, and I'm, I'm a, before I went to medical school, I, I studied computer science and engineering, and uh, technology is always something that's really, really exciting to me, and I think in order to be able to provide the best quality care, not only do we need the top quality doctors and nurses and, and team members, but we also need the tools to be able to provide the best care. Um, so a, a few years ago, we uh, brought in a brand new, what's called a three Tesla MRI, uh, which is state of the art, um, there's really nothing this thing can't do. But really exciting about it, and I think for any of you who've had to have an MRI, it's a short, a short bore and a wide bore MRI. So what does that mean? So many of you, if you've ever had an MRI in the past, know that you get you know kind of put back into this uh, into a tube, and you're you're pretty much you know looking around, and your whole body is in this machine. Well, you can kind of see it in that right picture. Uh, the short bore means instead of it being long where your whole body is in, it's, it's much shorter. So if you're having an MRI of your neck or your back, and I've had several of those myself, 
um, your legs are actually out of the machine, uh, most, mostly. Um, and it's also a wider bore. So instead of a, a very tight circle, it's a little bit wider to give you a little bit more room um, you know, for those who are uh, claustrophobic or a little anxiety, you know, get anxiety from, uh, from being in a, in a closed space. So again, we, we wanted to invest, it costs a little bit more money, but we thought this was gonna be much better for patient care. Next slide. So the AMDUR Ambulatory Care Center. So most of the AMDUR Ambulatory Care Center has moved over to uh, Hope Tower. Um, that was our outpatient imaging or pre-admission testing space. And all of that now is done in Hope Tower. So what we're doing with our, um, our, our, our space that was vacated is we're, we're creating, we've already used some of it for cardiovascular where we have our cardiac rehab site, but the bigger bulk of the space is gonna be dedicated to a neuroscience institute. Uh, we already uh, opened up about two years ago now um, a multiple sclerosis MS center. Uh, it's really amazing how much MS is in our community. Um, but in the uh, Neuroscience Institute, we're gonna take some of our very uh, high quality programs that are currently kind of disparate in, in many different areas and bring them all together under one roof. So we're gonna pull our, our ALS program, uh, our MS program, our headache program, um, our concussion program, our Alzheimer's and dementia program. All of these programs will be in one uh, central uh, neuroscience institute uh, where you'll get comprehensive care across many different disciplines. So we're really excited about that. And we're hoping, uh, we were hoping it would already be up and running. COVID kind of got in the way of some of our plans, but um, hopefully by you know, early to mid 2022, we will, uh, we will have that up and running again to provide excellent service to the community. Next slide. So this is our K Hubnanian Children's Hospital. Um, this is a uh, you know a slide just depicting our, our lobby entrance uh, on the, the second floor and the fifth floor. Um, we have two general pediatric uh, floors. We also have a ten bedded pediatric intensive care unit, um, and with uh, with the recruitment of some really high end surgeons, uh, we're able to keep many many patients uh, that used to go to CHOP. We can now keep them uh, and provide excellent care to them in, uh, in New Jersey, locally at Jersey Shore and KF Mania Children's Hospital. Uh, basically, the only thing we don't do is severe burns and, uh, and cardiac um, transplants. Um, and in pediatrics, we don't do pediatric cardiac surgery. Uh, everything else we basically you know, can handle right here at home. Next slide. So as I mentioned, our pediatric intensive care unit um, again, it's uh, state of the art. Uh, this was renovated, I think, right before I came. So it's only probably six or seven years old. Um, it, it's, uh, we used to have six beds, we expanded it to 10. Uh, we have board certified dedicated uh, pediatric intensive care specialists. And um, I'm really proud that under, under my watch, uh, we've, we've gone 24 seven in-house coverage with a pediatric intensivist. Uh, we've also done that um, for our neonatology uh, doctors, our, our ne neonatology intensivists in our NICU are also 24-7. So there is a, a board-certified uh, neonatologist and a board-certified pediatric intensivist in-house 24-7 as there are uh, like our trauma program. We also have 24-7 in-house traumatologists who are board-certified you know, trauma uh, and critical care surgeons. Next slide. So as I mentioned, our neonatal intensive care unit, uh, this was renovated. This was a project that, that started right around the time I started and we finished it in 2016. Uh, we have 34 uh, neonatology or, or NICU beds of different levels of severity. Um, in the most recent upgrade, uh, we have uh, 14 um, private rooms, uh, which is really you know, state of the art. We have a, a video monitoring system called NICVIEW that allows parents, uh, if you, let's say you had a patient, uh, a family member, a baby in the NICU, you could go home, uh, but stay in touch with a camera on your uh, iPhone or your you know, mobile device uh, to be able to see you know, 24 seven. You can imagine when, uh, when people have you know, children, especially their first and they're completely nervous and the patient for whatever reason had to be in an intensive care unit. Um, where you don't even want to leave the patient's bedside, you know, you're so worried. 
So to be able to offer that technology to, to look in your phone and see, see your loved you know, son or daughter or relative. Uh, we, we've had you know, grandparents from across the world. Uh, all you need is an internet connection and, and the password so you can get in. It's secure and it's really a, a great feature that we offer. Next slide. So in maternity, um, boy, we, uh, we've really grown our maternity services and this is an area that, that I've really tried to invest in. Um, we, when I started, we were doing about 1900 deliveries. Uh, we're gonna hit about 3200 this year. So, um, you know, really made a lot of investment in, in, uh, in high-end physicians, uh, in, you know, in solid, you know, practices. Uh, and we're, we're a great destination. Uh, why? Because we have, we have a residency teaching program, which, which many obstetricians like. And also, um, we have a level three NICU. So having that so that if anything should go wrong, you know, being uh, close to a, to a maternal fetal medicine specialist and a neonatologist, uh, and I mentioned they're there 24 seven, it gives people the peace of mind that they know, you know, God forbid they have some sort of a problem with delivery. They know that there's a, you know, a board certified uh, specialist there 24 seven. Next slide. So again, just getting back to technology. Um, so we have uh, two hybrid operating rooms currently in, uh, in Jersey Shore. One is dedicated to our comprehensive stroke center and the other really services our cardiac and vascular programs. Um, a hybrid operating room is really kind of a combination of an, interve an interventional laboratory, as well as it could be turned to a complete operating room in a matter of minutes. So if you were doing a, you know, a, a stroke procedure and for whatever reason you needed to convert it to an open procedure, the neurosurgeon could open uh, the, the, the head right there um, in the same bed. So you don't lose any time. Uh, the room converts in a matter of seconds or minutes to a complete fully functioning operating room. Um, we've also recently um, added another electrophysiology lab, uh, state-of-the-art equipment, you know, nice size. Um, and also we are now in the uh, finishing our first phase of renovating all of our cardiovascular labs. Uh, we are replacing, um, we replaced a few rooms last year. We're replacing another four rooms this year, the last of which will be completed at the end of August. So all of our rooms will have pretty much brand new state-of-the-art cardiovascular uh, equipment. So if you're having a heart attack or you need an ablation for atrial fibrillation or you have, or you have advanced heart failure and you, and you need a left ventricular assist device, all of those things could be done in our state-of-the-art labs. And our quality metrics are, are among the top in the state and even in the country. Next slide. So again, technology, and I think Dr. Parker knows this one well, this is our Da Vinci uh, XI surgical system um, that allows us to, to offer you know, the great, greatest and latest technology for advanced uh, minimally invasive surgery. Um, so no longer needing to do open procedures, which are, you know, more painful, take longer to heal. Um, even, even laparoscopy, um, you know, depending on the procedure can be a little bit more invasive. Uh, but this is, you know, one or two ports, um, you're putting the probes through and the doctor can, you know, just like a video game, uh, work behind a console and manipulate the instruments that are extremely precise and provide a really amazing uh, surgery in um, general surgery, colorectal surgery, uh, uro, urogenital surgery, uh, GYN surgery, many, many surgeries, even orthopedics now, although it's not this particular system, um, there are robots that can pretty much do, you know, many different kinds of surgery. Um, so really exciting that we, we bring that, uh, the, that kind of technology to, uh, to the local community. Next slide. So our cardiovascular intensive care unit, um, you know, one of the things about Jersey Shore is we probably have more intensive care beds um, than many other hospitals in the, in the state of New Jersey. Uh, when you add up our medical intensive care unit, our surgical intensive care unit, trauma intensive care unit, our neuro, uh, neuro intensive care unit, we have a dedicated neuro intensive care unit, you know, uh, staffed by um, board certified neurologists in, uh, in neuro, in neuro uh, critical care disorders. And our cardiovascular, in addition to our neonatology and PICU, and our cardiovascular 10-bedded unit dedicated to cardiac surgery and surgical procedures. Um, this is also a state-of-the-art. This was built in 
Dr. Sable, I think you're muted. I think he uh, froze actually. Oh. Okay. Maybe the next person can take over. Welcome, Dr. Frank. Hi. Um, so while uh, we're recovering and resuscitating Dr. Sable, uh, I, I uh, was asked to speak for a few minutes on our uh, COVID-19 experience at uh, Jersey Shore. So I have uh, been uh, at Jersey Shore for uh, 38 years and uh, have done infectious diseases at Jersey Shore for, for 38 years, although my, my real day job now is all about uh, quality and patient safety. But when COVID hit, it was all hands on deck. And uh, obviously it challenged every health system and every hospital. Uh, and we took this as a challenge. Uh, and I wanna just spend uh, literally five minutes talking about our outcomes and how I think we got there. And it was in, in no small measure uh, due to partnerships with communities like yours uh, that we were able to be um, successful. So this is, this is the data. This is drawn from a national uh, database, and it depicts our mortality index. And mortality index is the actual number of deaths uh, divided by the expected mortality. So if, the, if that ratio is one, then you have the same number of deaths as was expected for the patient population that you were treating. If your index is greater than one, you had more deaths than was expected. If your ratio is less than one, then you had fewer deaths than would have been predicted by any of the prediction models. You can see from this slide that New York and New Jersey all did uh, quite well and all were uh, under that, at least the academic centers in New York that I chose uh, for this comparison. Uh, these are centers that you would all know very well. Um, they all did well and the ratio was 0.63. But you can see at Jersey Shore, we really uh, focused on this problem and our mortality index was an astounding low 0.2, uh, a phenomenal number. I wanna to go to the next slide and take some guesses as to why this was, I think, not an accident. Next slide. So this was all about preparedness and adaptability. Uh, so we, had, we were prepared for catastrophes, though we weren't quite prepared for the kind of catastrophe that COVID was, because we really drilled for single day catastrophes like World Trade Center events. Uh, we didn't really drill uh, for uh, pandemics. Uh, so it took a lot of preparedness, but it also took a lot of adaptability. Um, in, in an institution, and we, you know, I, I, would, I would tell you that, uh, and Dr. Sable would, would, would agree that we are a little bit of a bureaucracy and probably could take me a month to get a shelf hung on my wall. Uh, by the time it goes through all of the uh, approvals. But somehow, within a couple of days, we were able to rapidly expand our critical care capabilities to really handle hundreds of critically ill patients that were pouring in. At one point, we had uh, 14 Hatsala amb ambulances come in one hour uh, during the, the height of the pandemic. Uh, we needed to keep our staff safe. And so we rapidly expanded the number of negative pressure rooms, pre rooms where the, the outflow of air uh, is sufficient that it would make it less likely for someone to be exposed to COVID. We needed to transform our staffing patterns and really it was all hands on deck. Psychiatry residents became medicine residents, surgery residents became re medicine residents and medicine residents became COVID doctors. Um, and all of the critical care people canceled all their office hours and were full-time uh, in, the in the hospital. And perhaps most important was rapid adoption and rejection of treatment paradigms. Adoption when we thought they were valuable and rejection when we realized that the initial steps may not have worked. Uh, next slide. So I think that some of our great outcomes really were attributable uh, to some key decisions. Um, and maybe the most... <laughs> Did I do that? So, no, one, sorry, I'm back. <laughs> so one of the, those key decisions, and this is my last slide and I'll give it back to uh, Dr. Sable. So one of those uh, key decisions and maybe the most important key decision 
is that the national and international guidelines that were promulgated early in the, in the pandemic said, we should follow a strategy of early intubation for anybody who wasn't doing well with COVID. And we should not use high flow oxygen or non-invasive methods of ventilation. And there were two reasons. One, they said these patients probably wouldn't do well with that kind of ventilation and would end up intubated anyway. And more importantly, those procedures are more likely to expose the staff to COVID. Well, our critical care people really didn't buy that because being intubated is no pleasure. Uh, and working together with our nurses, uh, with our residents, uh, with our fellows, uh, we really made a decision that we would try to keep uh, every patient uh, from being intubated if we could in any way. Um, some months later, the guidelines changed and adopted the same strategy uh, nationally that we had adopted. Um, and we know that once you were intubated with COVID, you had approximately, no matter where you were, 40% chance of dying. Um, we discharged almost 100 patients before the national guidelines changed uh, who had been treated with uh, high flow oxygen and non-invasive positive uh, pressure ventilation. We believe that half of those would have died had we followed the guidelines. Um, our critical care people also adopted uh, targeted anticoagulation for high-risk patients early on, I believe for stalling uh, secondary strokes and heart attacks. Uh, we partnered with our communities uh, who are very instrumental in helping us uh, uh, form a convalescent plasma program, which I think was marginally helpful. Uh, I don't think it was as helpful as we had predicted. And then I think the get, one of the game changers was the introduction of monoclonal antibodies that you've heard about. They're now being advertised widely on TV. And one of the unique features at Jersey Shore is we were, I believe, the only hospital in the state and only one of a few in the country where we made the decision that pregnancy in and of itself was a high risk situation for COVID, having seen several pregnant women severely ill, deliver premature babies and have significant uh, perinatal uh, problems. And so we became one of the few centers that was infusing monoclonal antibodies because we believed that the risk benefit ratio weighed in favor of it. Uh, we feel kind of vindicated because the uh, national guidelines have now changed and agree with us that uh, pregnancy is in fact a risk factor uh, for progression to severe COVID and therefore monoclonal antibodies should be used. So we think these four uh, decisions among many others, uh, and we had weekly meetings to discuss our treatment plans and revise them on an ongoing basis as the, as the literature changed, uh, really contributed to outstanding outcomes for our COVID patients uh, and kept our staff safe as well. Uh, so I thought I'd share that with you because it's one of the uh, it's sort of a microcosm of the kinds of things we do to try to enhance the care uh, for all our patients at Jersey Shore. So I'll turn it back to Dr. Sable. Thank you. So I don't know if you can let me share my video again, but uh, if not, you'll have to look at my picture instead of me. Um, so if we could go back, oh, there it is. If we could go back to the other slides. And I apologize, of course, the internet goes down right when, you, uh, when you're in the middle of presenting. Um, next slide, and I'll try to be quick because it's already 846. Um, so this is Hope Tower. Uh, this is our 300,000 square foot ambulatory and teaching pavilion. Um, next slide. And by the way, HOPE stands for Healing Outpatient Experience. That's the H-O-P-E, and that's why it's capitalized. It's an acronym. So within this building on the first floor, we have our Pericone Center for Women's uh, Cancer and Ecology. Uh, we have our uh, Women's Imaging Center, we have our General Imaging, we have our Pre-Admission Testing, we have our Linear Accelerators, which I'll show you in a minute, for Radiation uh, Therapy for Cancer. Um, next slide. So this is a, a True Beam Linear Accelerator, uh, state-of-the-art um, linear accelerator for, for many different types of cancer to pinpoint uh, radiation and exactly where you need it. Next slide. Our second floor is our um, multidisciplinary cancer uh, floor where we have um, treatment rooms and we also have our infusion center where we have 33 chairs uh, in a very open, uh, again, you know, lots of light, trying to make, uh, you know, the best of a, of a challenging situation if you have to have chemotherapy uh, to do it in a way that's comfortable, um, easily accessible. And, uh, you know, again, it doesn't feel like you're in a, in a hospital ward, you're kind of in a more you know, pleasing environment. Next, next slide. 
Um, so this is um, on our, uh, this is the Christopher Center for Mental Health. This is on our ninth floor, where we also have the um, Dorothy B. Hirsch Foundation Center for Pediatric Hematology and Oncology. Um, actually, no, this is the fifth floor. I'm sorry, I can't even see the picture here. This is our fifth floor where we have our, um, our children's, uh, this is our pediatric floor as well. So we have all of our pediatric subspecialties on the fifth floor. You can see the uh, pediatric logo and the children's hospital logo and some toys and things for kids to play with. Next slide. Uh, so this, uh, this is one of my most proud uh, parts of the, of the tower. So on the ninth floor, we built a simulation lab. Um, you know, if you think about uh, airline pilots, they train and they train on simulators and all different conditions that are thrown at them. So we, we brought that same technology to medical education. So we train doctors and nurses and our residents and, and we train people in team situations uh, with these very high fidelity simulators. The simulators, uh, they talk, they bleed, uh, you can deliver babies with them. Uh, I mean, these simulators cost $100,000 a piece. They are super high fidelity and we train uh, very challenging situations like breach deliveries, um, all sorts of different things. And we videotape and we then debrief and we can show people how they reacted in a team setting uh, when we're running, for example, a cardiac arrest in the emergency department. Uh, we can make sure everybody knows what to do. And, and that's how we, we get people to, to practice some high risk situations that are maybe not as common, but they're very high risk. And the lab is a great way to simulate that. Next slide. So we have our John K. Lloyd Amphitheater. Uh, John Lloyd was uh, the CEO of Meridian Health. Uh, he retired, uh, I guess, two years ago or so now. Um, and John, uh, we named this amphitheater after him. This is where we do all of our uh, symposia and uh, our, our large teaching lectures and so forth. Uh, we can hold about 200 to 250 people in this state-of-the-art uh, amphitheater. Next slide. So just to, just to wrap up, um, I think we mentioned this earlier, Jersey Shore is number six in New Jersey, 21 in the New York metro area. Next slide. Uh, we're recognized by health grades as, as America's 250 best hospitals and also top 100 best hospital for stroke care in the nation, uh, which is also a rem remarkable uh, uh, achievement. Next slide. Top maternity hospital recognition by Newsweek. Next slide. And we received the Joint Commission Gold Seal of Approval for Advanced Certification in Inpatient Diabetes Care in Hip and Knee Joint Replacement Program. And of course, um, our Advanced Certification for our Comprehensive Stroke Center. Next slide. And uh, this is a long acronym, but the American Association of Cardiovascular and Pulmonary Rehabilitation Certification. Um, and we also are recognized um, as three star, which is the highest uh, star rating for coronary artery bypass graft surgery and uh, cabbage and aortic valve replacement, uh, according to the Society of Thoracic Surgeons, which is a national organization, indicating that our performance is better than expected. And last but not least, Magnet. Um, we're the first health system in the nation to receive this prestigious award uh, based on our nursing care and our nursing excellence. Um, and uh, ANCC is the nation's largest and foremost uh, nursing accreditation and credential organization. And I would say, just to wrap up, we could never do this without all of our team members, our doctors, our nurses, our residents, our techs, our, our environmental service, our transporters, our food and nutrition. All of them play a huge role, and, and they're all you know community members. So we we uh, we want to provide that close to home, top quality, excellent patient experience care for all the people in our communities that we serve on a daily basis. So thank you for listening. And again, uh, happy to take any questions, comments that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Are we done with our speakers? Paul. Close and maybe do surprise guests. Yeah, if, if I can just close, uh, tell my, I actually just uh, relaying a, a personal story, right? Um, so we have Dr. Parker here, Dr. Frank, Dr. Sable, 
Um, the quality and caliber of our physicians is second to none. Uh, you know, we, we showed you some photos today of our facility. We've talked about some of our awards and recognition. We think we, we rival any hospital in the state of New Jersey and many across the river. Um, the, again, the caliber of the physicians is second to none. And my personal experience, and th this was not uh, pre-scripted, and I only found out this afternoon that I'm going to reference uh, somebody's dad here, but um, about 10 years ago, I was in a restaurant in Marlboro, New Jersey, and my daughter had a seizure. And the, the ambulance came and wanted to take her uh, to a hospital close to Marlboro, and I insisted that we go to Jersey Shore. And part of the reason for that was when I called somebody that I knew at Jersey Shore as to who's the best pediatric neurologist to get my daughter to, they said, that's Dr. Richard Sultan down here. So my daughter went down there and she has a, a kidney disease that precludes her from getting some of the usual medications that would be prescribed for seizures. Uh, and Dr. Sultan asked me if, if, I, if he could have 24 hours to come up with a, an alternative so that the medicine we would give her for a seizure did not damage her kidney. And he came back and he found a, a, a medication that gets uh, dissolved through the liver, not the kidney. And the long and short of it is 10 years later, my daughter has not had a seizure, uh, thanks to Dr. Sultan, and did not realize that that was Gita's dad. And so um, next time you see your dad, give him a big hug because he's a real hero for me. And, Thank you. Uh, but that's, uh, again, that's the caliber of physicians that you're going to experience at Jersey Shore, whether it's maternity, pediatrics, uh, cardiac, oncology. Uh, so we, we hope that uh, you uh, learned some things tonight about us and uh, would love to tell you more. I'm sure we'll do uh, future programs like this. Uh, tonight was an overview and uh, we look forward to getting to know the community and working closely to take care of your healthcare needs. So uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you so much. And uh, I really have to reiterate everything that everyone said tonight. The hospital is filled with people who really care. Every doctor is so experienced. So um, the bedside manner of every doctor is amazing, rivals any doctor or exceeds any doctor that you, know, you may find in other hospitals in New York or otherwise. And um, I really encourage everybody in this community to really give Jersey Shore a second look, especially when they're in deal for the summer or all year round. It's, uh, it's really one of the best places out there. And uh, before we close, I just wanna invite Jack Hittery to say a few words. He has been instrumental um, throughout this whole COVID process and being a liaison between um, you know, us as individuals and, and patients and uh, families and the hospitals and really the monoclonal antibodies that he was able to get for our community members, saved countless numbers of lives. So I'd like him to just share a few words with us before we close for the night. Peter, thank you. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here uh, with yourself, with the doctors and uh, the team at Jersey Shore. As you say, Gita, Jersey Shore is a gem, absolute incredible resource for our community. One area that I'd like to highlight in particular, uh, Dr. Sable alluded to it, but I just wanna emphasize it because it really bears uh, particular underscoring. Jersey Shore Medical Center is the only hospital in our region that is both state designated as a comprehensive stroke center and nationally accredited as a primary stroke center. And just to put that in perspective, fewer than 5% of the hospitals in the United States meet that accreditation criteria. Um, I want to remind us of what both the doctors and Hatzalah continually tell us but it bears repeating here. When someone, God forbid, has symptoms of a stroke, and I wanna ask the doctors uh, in a minute to maybe talk about this from the medical point of view, what people should look, look for, there is no time to waste. And we need a center, we have a center in Jersey Shore that can do the analysis very, very quickly. Uh, Hatzala is able to pick someone up and get them in a CAT scanner in under 12 minutes for Jersey Shore and determine what kind of stroke it is if it is an ischemic stroke, you only have about three and a half hours, very small window of time to administer a life-saving drug, TPA. And it's very important that we remind ourselves to call Hatzalah, to call an ambulance, get over to Jersey Shore. It's the only comprehensive stroke center in our area uh, when we're in Deal and New Jersey. And it is a place that has deep expertise in this particular condition. 
and God forbid someone faces this condition, it's important to know to, to act very quickly. Do not wait till it, quote, passes. This is not the kind of thing you wait for. And I want to ask Dr. Sable and the other doctors if you want to maybe make a comment on that first, then I'll close out. Yeah, I, I, will, I will say first, thanks for that endorsement. I mean, that's, uh, you know, you, you said it better than I could even say it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's certain emergencies that, you know, you, you don't let go, right? You're having a heart attack um, and not everybody reads the textbook and has the signs of, you know, the crushing chest pain with radiating to the arm or the jaw, um, you know, as a practicing emergency physician for over a decade. Uh, unfortunately, most people who come in with these symptoms don't have the classic symptoms. Uh, when it comes to stroke, that's another one. You know, there's many acronyms out there. I use FAST or FASTER, you know, F for face, you know, uh, any drooping or numbness on, on one side of the face, um, you know, uh, ask, ask to smile, any sort of drooping or un, unevenness of the smile. Uh, arms, you know, uh, making sure that there's no weakness and they can lift and move both arms. Stability, is there any uh, dizziness, uh, loss of coordination, uh, unable to balance. Uh, talking, you know, can you name objects? Can you say, you know, point to something and say, what is this? And can somebody say, this is a watch? Uh, hold up a pen. Can they, can they name this is a pen? Um, you know, eyes, uh, you know, that's the, so F-A-S-T, E would, faster is the E-R part is, is eyes. Um, you know, if you have any difficulty seeing out of one or, one or both eyes, a double vision could be a sign of a stroke. It could be other things. Um, and then the R is react, you know, it's call 911 immediately. Uh, even if symptoms go away, uh, many what's called transient ischemic attacks could be a harbinger or a sign of a, of a pending larger stroke. Um, so even if you're, you're better, you should get right to a hospital. Uh, don't delay and better be, better be safe than sorry. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. So I just want to make sure we got that out there. This is life-saving information. Uh, we're going to be putting up this recording online. Please make sure to share this information. Uh, one, in general about Jersey Shore as a medical center and a tremendous resource for our community, but also specifically on this issue. Um, unfortunately, in the past, we've lost people who did not act immediately or would not, did not get TPA in the window uh, when they had an ischemic stroke. And even if it's not ischemic stroke, they also need other kinds of treatment and therapy, and it's important to get them to a, a stroke center. Um, not every hospital is a place that you can uh, deal with such a very serious condition. And Jersey Shore, thank God, so close to us, is not only a hospital that can, it's one of the best in the nation at this particular condition. So you heard tonight about the many, many different uh, facilities and capabilities of Jersey Shore Medical Center. Uh, it's, le it's a leader in many, many different areas. We're very fortunate to have it so close to our community with a very dedicated medical staff, nursing staff, uh, and the entire team at Jersey Shore uh, is there to work with us, not only on a reactive medical basis, but also we hope to establish and deepen our relationship with Jersey Shore for preventative medicine uh, as well, because Jersey Shore offers many things there. So Gita, thank you so much for moderating tonight. Thank you doctors uh, for speaking tonight and we'll be making sure to get this word out uh, on social media uh, in different video channels so that we can let everyone know about the incredible resource that we have so close to us. Thank hey, you. Very one, much. One, one more just comment. You know, I know yeah. we threw a lot of information at everybody. So if, uh, if after you've had a time to digest this or you have other questions and you can get them to either you or Gita or whoever else, you know, feel free to, to get them to us. We'll, we're happy to follow up and try to get you whatever answers that you're looking for. We, we want Thank you me. to feel comfortable coming to the hospital if you need it. And we want to make your experience, you know, one that you can be, uh, you know, you know, happy about. Yeah, and I think, Dr. Sable, as we've discussed, I think we wanted to have this video call first to really introduce the hospital center to the community in a, in a broader way, but then hopefully we can follow up with further calls on specific topics. And I also wanna thank the SCA for putting this together tonight. The SCA has been there for us throughout COVID uh, for the past 15 months, uh, and their work has been tremendously impactful uh, and has saved numerous lives in the community and also beyond our community. We also reached out to many other neighboring communities with this kind of information. So I wanna thank the SCA, thanks Gita, thanks Jersey Shore and thanks thank to the you. doctors who joined us tonight. Back to you Gita. Thank you so much everybody. This was great and certainly only the first of many more to come. So thank you everybody and have a great evening.
Thanks, Gita. Thank Thanks, Thank Andrew. Have a good night, everybody.